Hello and welcome to the GMS Magazine channel. In this episode I have an unbooking where I am going to take a look for the first time, I really haven't opened this book yet, of Unbreakable Revolution. This is a compendium of adventures that have been gathered, created by people from Asia. This is something new that I haven't seen before. I had the enormous pleasure of interviewing Jackie Leong, the person behind this project, about this a few months ago, and I can't wait to look at it. Welcome to the GMS Magazine RPG Unbooking videos. A few weeks ago I was asked in a panel about the inclusion and diversity, about what I would like to see regarding that inclusion and diversity in the world of role-playing games. And my answer was that I would like to see companies, because let's face it, it is very Anglo-dominated, both North American and UK, and I said I would love to see works from people from countries that have seemingly less tradition of making role-playing games and board games and have those works translated into English so we can see not just a diversity in terms of ethnicities and names but also in terms of countries, cultures, so on and so forth. Well, that is exactly what Jackie Lee Young has done with Unbreakable Revolution. Now, I say exactly, I am not entirely sure if these adventures were commissioned in English already or if they had been published in their respective languages before and then translated into English. Regardless, the point that somebody has made to go to Asia and find different designers with different command of different systems to create different adventures and then bring them all into one book, that is brilliant and I wish we could see more of that. However, However, what has the result been like? I have to say, I have been waiting for this book since November. It is middle of May already. Yes, that many months. It would appear that at the time of recording this video, in May 2022, the shipping crisis is still going because it takes for months for anything to arrive when I ordered for um, from Drive-Thru RPG. I haven't tried any other systems, any other companies, so I don't know anybody else, but this is not the first book I order. In fact, there was another one, the Iron Kingdoms, that I had to, we had to order it three times, and it took months and months and months to arrive. So there is still going on, and that's why I haven't done this way, way sooner. So, yes, this is a POD. Now, this is a hard cover with a very simple cover, I, I have to say, um, that wants to show some sort of revolution icon, I suppose. It's quite simple, very graphic, very effective. I like it an awful lot. And they have made fairly good use of the back cover um, uh, for this book, which is which is very good. Uh, as I was saying, this is a collection of uh, seven bold, uniquely Asian adventures written and illustrated by Asian creators from around the world. That is very, very good. It gives a sentence about the topic and the plot of each adventure, which is brilliant. And it tells you about the systems that is going to go. So even though it is unlikely that you're ever going to see this book in print, in a convention because it's a POD, so unless they, they do a lot of them and considering the pitfalls that we're facing right now with shipping, it can be risky to do so, but this is very well done. I like it. The back cover is very good. Regardless of the shipping issues, we have to say that um, the print on demand is getting better and better all the time. The binding is brilliant, the paper is very good, the print, even though it's not premium, is more than good enough, I have to say, so I can dive in to the table of content and then I will take a look at the layout and our direction. So, good list of credits. Uh, that that is is very excellent. Uh, the cover is Demons Walk Among the Devils of Spain, and 
they do uh, trust me that's exactly where i live so i i know um and well we've done some lots of shitty things that we have plenty of demons to purge but Never mind, that's for a different video, different thing. So, um, good table of content for the credits. Now, table of contents, which is something I like a lot, uh, we have to say. I don't like it when I see uber simple table of contents that don't tell me enough information, just as much as I don't like when I see something that you think, yeah, that should go into an index. Wow, way too much. This looks like, you know, the kind of thing I like, because we get the introduction, uh, how to use this book, it's a couple of pages, a couple of pages on safety tools, which is nice, and then the artists, the editors, uh, and it seems, because I haven't looked at it, I cannot tell you, but it seems like they've given plenty of space for both, uh, because we have four pages of artists, one for the editors, one for sensitivity readers, and then we have the game licenses, which will require a fair number of pages, because there are a fair number of licenses in here. So, first adventure, Big Rat, Don't Eat My Millet, uh, page 10, written by, edited by, and content warnings. This is something I haven't seen a lot of before in the table of content, but that is not a bad thing to include in here. Um, so that Because that way you can uh, get ready to see things that you may not find comfortable with. So that I like a lot. Uh, I like the honesty of foretelling you what you're going to find, uh, because it would be quite easy not to say anything at all and then just forget it. It would be quite easy not to mention the writer and the editor in here and just leave it uh, until the first page of the adventure. But no, they've, they've done it. I like that quite a lot. We, we find some of the standard issues that we get with print on demand, which is the cut in the middle is not perfect. So you can see how there is a tiny little band of whiteness in there. Uh, there isn't that much that can be done about it. You just have to hope for the best and make bigger bleeds when you prepare the document. So I'm not going to uh, berate the designers for, for that to happen because it's, it's a combination of not being able to try, the printer being on and off every single day, so it's a bit it's a bit tricky, but if you ever want to make a POD, think that that is something that could easily happen. So, uh, anyway, we have Big Rat in my Millet, Days of Powder, Ponder and Plot, make, an, make of Thee an Instrument of Peace, Bad Lock Fortune, The Crimson Uprising, The Mountain's Shroud, and the first Dia of Navratri. I hope I haven't butchered that too much, and if I have, I'm sorry. I have no idea how to pronounce this properly. Sorry about that. So, two um, columns layout. That's not bad. There isn't an awful lot of separation between paragraphs. That's a shame because to people like me with my specific type of dyslexia, that feels like it's a whole one thing. It's very difficult to differentiate. This looks like just one paragraph to me. Um, it would be nice to have seen just a, lot, a tiny little bit more separation between paragraphs, a few more points here and there. Uh, and that would be that would help immensely. The systems used are listed in here. So we get 13th H by Pellegrin Press, the Black Hag, BX Essentials, D20 Systems, <clears throat> One Shot World, uh, Forge in the Dark by John Harper, Ganslinger, Ivan Sword RPG, Pathfinder, Quest RPG, and Year Zero Engine. So all of those things. You can use this adventure with safety tools, couple of pages, so we have lines and veils, good, palette, all right. Support checking, yes, I like, script change, good, and the X card, not my favorite, but it works rather well, um, more often than not, thank goodness. So, to be honest, I'd rather see the uh, traffic light system rather than the X card, because it's a bit more flexible, and I, I prefer that flexibility, but there it goes. Very simple art direction thus far. Oh, that is nice. That is a very, very cool illustration. Very cool indeed. Love the watercolor sort of vibe to it. Love the, I suppose, Japanese perhaps? You know, muted palette, absolutely beautiful. I, I can see this 
on a tapestry looking incredible really really good love that so um Gameplay time. Oh, I like that. I'd like to tell you more or less how long it should take to play this adventure. That, that can help a great deal. And then the recommended reading for this to be able to run it. And it tells you what systems they have. Okay, that is very, very encouraging. I like that. I like because there's a... I, I like the diversity and variation in the systems that you can use. It's not constrained to just one system and you have to use that system. No, no, it seems that here, if I take my shots off, my uh, 13th Age, The Black Hag, The Existential, One Shot World, Quest RPG and Year Zero Engine. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. I like that. Good use of uh, differentiation of um, columns. This is something that is not done very well very often, but this is quite well done. Um, just to, have to take advantage of all the space. Interesting combination of illustrations. Let's move to another one. See, this is another issue with POD. Maybe, I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yes, you can. Where here you have a difference. I don't know if this is to do, I doubt it, that it is to do with the work of art itself or if it is to do with the printing, where you get a, a little difference in how the ink has been spread. Uh, there isn't much that one can do about that. So this is again, that's just how POD works for the time being. Let's go for the second adventure. Oh, that is good. Second chapter. This is very nice. Very nice indeed. It's a very different style. Not my cup of tea, but that's fine. I love that. So uh, let's take a look. Appendix. So two uh, um, two chapters for this adventure, and the art direction does vary considerably from one. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. This is a different adventure. I had gone to a different adventure already. No, okay. So the first adventure is fine because the whole art direction is cohesive. That's good. And then we go to the second adventure and this is something complete. Okay, now that it makes sense. That makes more sense. I'm happier. So days of power, the planted and plot. Warnings, three to 12 hours. Wow, that's a very big difference. I wonder what would make a difference. That much. But hey, uh, so content warnings, colonialism, imperialism, open water, Threatening ocean life, sharks, okay, that's fine. Piracy, theft, hostages, suicide attempts, uh, description of imprisonment and drowning. That is going to be a heavy adventure. Or it should be. But, yeah, same thing. I like this. Frames in here. Make of thee an instrument of peace. That's pretty good. So, a content warning. I'm quite happy that they're mentioning here profaning of Christian beliefs and imagery. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy they're mentioning that because they're obviously showing that they do feel respect for that kind of religion. So, that, um, thank you for that. That's, that's excellent. Everything's been included. That's great. Love the color, by the way. Even though it's a POD, but the color. Oh, nice illustrations. Love that. Damn. Those are good. Approaches, and you have all of that? Yeah. Excellent. Good reutilization of the imagery. And then having a conclusion. That's continuing. Oh, okay. I like how every adventure feels, oh, sweet. Um, I love how every adventure feels completely different. Even though there are some uh, traits that make them look very similar, like, you know, some of the layout remains the same, the font remains similar. I love the anthology as, as such. See, that kind of thing, I don't like that much. I mean, if you're going to change, well, why, why, why did you put this in? 
dark column and then this is in three columns and then this is in two columns. Ah, oh, please don't do this to me. No, I, I am not a happy person like that. Keep your layout more consistent as often as you possibly can. Don't, don't, don't. Three and here two. Why? Do you hate me or something? It's not fair. Let's go to another adventure. <laughs> so. Okay, three, two, oh, two, two. Okay, fine. I'm feeling better. Yes, it is an issue. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not going to go page by page because, come on, uh, you should be getting this book at the very least get a PDF. Love the map. That's good. I haven't seen enough cartography, I have to say. I wish I had seen a little bit more cartography, but then I love cartography. So why wouldn't I want to see more cartography? Um, but other than that, these are very good. These are excellent. And uh, having the PDF will help an awful lot. Shroud. Good. Well, I'm not going to go... I'm not going to say anything else. I've, I've, I quite like it. I Yeah, I find the um, disparity of layout a bit... Uh, uh, but then it's one of my pet peeves. I just don't like it. It is down to you to decide whether you care about that enough or not. But the fact that you are going to find some completely different approaches to adventure design, culture, etc., uh, etc., et in this book. And each adventure can be played with different systems. That by itself gives it a flexibility that I wish we could see in other adventures. I understand people uh, wanting to design for their preferred games. I really do. But what this does of opening itself to a wider audience by being able to be played with different rule sets. Yeah, that is something I can easily get behind. When I read this, and I will as soon as possible, which I am not going to give you a date because I have a pile of books like that to read and I am really slow reading it. But as soon as I can, uh, I will let you know what I feel about this um, because some of these, they sound very, very good. Meanwhile, if you have already played them uh, or read them, I would love to hear what you have to say. But until the next time, thank you so much for being there and I will talk to you very Very soon. Take care.